Ha <laughs> ha! First day in the French Foreign Legion Regiment. That first night for me at the Mountain Regiment, Ducium Reg, Ducium Regimo Etranger de Jenny, the second engineering regiment, if you're gonna translate it, is a mountain specialty unit. Now, why did I choose an engineering regiment? People would ask. Why not go to Ducium Rep, the parachute regiment? Well, as I said in the military free fall video I did, check that YouTube out. It's a little bit lower. I didn't want to go do static line, automatic parachute, right? We just fall like a sack of potatoes on the ground. No thanks. Also, I was directed by Legion leadership when I was going through the selection process in Oban, they were asking me, hey man, what do you want to do? I told them I wanted to go to DCM Rep, the parachute regiment. And I wanted to go to specifically GCP. Group Commando Parachutist, Parachute Commando Group. And they said, okay, well, th think about this. They, they explained to me. First of all, at DCM Rep, it's a very tough regiment just in terms of lifestyle. You're out, they call it Alcatraz. You're out on an island, out on Corsica, and you're kind of locked in. And they knew where I was coming from. I was coming from a special forces background. I had been doing halos. They're like, dude, you're going to be doing static lines. I was also pretty big, heavy. They were like, dude, you're older and bigger. They need, they want smaller, lighter guys because you're falling down like hard. People don't know about static line parachuting. You can't control, you can't flare. So you land very hard. And they said the most deployed unit in the French Foreign Legion was Ducium Reg, Ducium Jenny, the, Mount, the Mountain Regiment. And there they have a commando group called GCM, Group Commando Montan, Mountain Commando Group. And they're deploying the most, he said. So, he said, think about it. I want you to really give it some thought. I took the guy's advice. I remember him looking at me because he called me back right before, right after I was selected, which is very rare for, uh, he was a chef, a three, uh, pretty much like a senior chief in the French Foreign Legion. And he called me alone to the office and looked at me. And I remember he had like yellow eyes and he was saying, look, go to do CM Jenny and screen for Mountain Commando Group. And I took him as like a sign. Sometimes you gotta look for these universal signs, man. If you're open, if your heart's open and you're ready to hear the message and hear some guidance, don't try to steer the river. Sometimes people are brought into your life to guide you, but you can't be guided if, you, if you're too rigid, right? You have to be, you have to know your course, but you, you have to be able to adjust a little bit. It's important. Too rigid, shit breaks, right? Just like a skyscraper, right? There's a little sway built in. A little sway. If it was too rigid, it would shatter apart if there was an earthquake. So, I stuck with that. Through Castell, through the boot camp, through all that, I had my plan. And I, every time they would ask, we would have to pass these reports with the captain, you know, and they would ask you, where do you want to go? And if you adjusted your answers and you got wiggly or you heard some new Gucci information from the rumor mill and people, they're like, this fucking guy doesn't know where he wants to go. So they'll just send you anywhere. I stuck with my story and guess what? When I graduated from boot camp, I was sent there. And now we're talking about the first night there. I'll talk more about what it was like being there, the training. We're going to go into some mountain warfare stuff because it's attached to the 27th Mountain Infantry Brigade of France, of the French military. So that's what they're, what brigade they're under. But we left. We were picked up by this small bus that had pretty much a chief and a corporal who were picking us up and took us handful of guys 
I uh, showed up with a, a South Korean who had been in the South Korean military before and had lived in the United States. So he spoke some English. I was with a Belarusian. I was with a Ukrainian, a Mongolian, and a guy from Georgia. And we were quiet on the way bus and we're in our dress uniform and we don't know what to expect. We just graduated and two hours had passed and now it's nighttime and we're driving up this fucking hill in South France and it's February, late February when we're arriving. So there's a little bit of snow on the ground and it's isolated. This is the most isolated regiment in the French Foreign Legion, at least on mainland France. And we're driving, it's in this little village called St. Crystal. Petit village. It's nord-est du apte, une heure demi avec voiture. It's northeast of the city of Apt, about an hour and a half by car, if you don't speak French. And we, and I'm seeing the snow and the cold, and one of the, the chief turns around and he says something to us. My French wasn't very good. Still's not good, but it was definitely not good then. And it's 2019 now, or 2020, excuse me, February, just to kind of give you time and space. And he says, to, says something, he says, hey, what he said was this, par la chance pour vous, ce soir, yen en fait. <laughs> what that translates as is, which I didn't know at the time was, there's no luck for you, for y'all. Tonight, there's a party. And what I didn't know was what I was walking into was a little bit of a shit storm. We showed up and I unload the bags and it's dead quiet. The regiment's like deserted. It's like apocalypse, winter, f nuclear fallout. That's what it felt like. It was just stark government buildings, snow and just quiet darkness. So I was like, well, maybe everyone's asleep. It's going to be chill. We're just going to be able to get in our rooms and get set up. That was absolutely not the case. I showed up and I walk in dress blues and there's a guy running the office and they're kind of sizing us up and, and we're unloading our bags. And then I walk in, walk, open the double doors actually inside the building. And it smelled like a fucking frat house. I went, Oh no, it, that stale beer spilled on the ground. And I look down the hallway and I see a fucking guy with his shirt off. And I went, oh no, what have I done? <laughs> I'm 34 now. I wasn't trying to get into a fucking frat house and deal with this shit. I'm trying to get right. I was trying to build my body up. Get some, I was just trying to set off. People know my story. I was trying to get chill, man. I had been through all this shit. I needed quiet, man. And that was a rough night. The first guy who we saw with his shirt off, he was end up, he, it turns out this was a very unique, it wasn't like, it was like a Wednesday too, which was scary. It was the middle of the week. And this, there was a guy who got picked up from Mountain Commando Group. And there's a bar in the small building, right? About a hundred guys live there in a company, the company building. And they were having a huge party and they pulled us, they pulled us into the hallway and he says, He's drunk and he goes, you guys got a hey, two minute or on left two set merit, which is two minutes to um, um, take off all your shit. Rechange into some camouflage. We're crawling, running around the building in our dress uniforms first at night. And I'm, look, I don't know, rocks and shit. I'm just, for time, come in. Then we need to do a change out drill. Then next thing I know, I got a fucking helmet on. I got face paint on. I'm crawling in the snow out in the back, ramping you know, doing military crawls in the fucking back, getting hazed. And I'm thinking, what the fuck? I uh, was a Navy SEAL. Now I'm getting hazed by God knows who in the middle of the night crawling in the snow. That was a tough pill to swallow, but you charge on. And the push-ups, because you're drunk, they pulled us into the bar. One of the fucking, like, Master Chiefs is drunk and smashes, open hand slaps the Georgian across the face, like... We're doing push-ups on the ground. There's broken glass everywhere and hectic, 
hectic. They finally put us in the room, tell us to change and get our dress uniforms prepared because they're all dirty and shit now. So we got to get them ready for the morning. And there's rat shit on the fuck, <laughs> dead flies in this room. They had shut this room up because whatever, there was some broken lights and shit. They just shut it. There was nobody living in there. So by the time we opened it, there's that dead rats shit on the fucking, I mean, rat shit on the beds and whatever. And the South Korean walked in. He goes, there's a dead fly on my bed. <laughs> Shout out, Rio. Anyway, so we went through all that, right? It was, went to bed at 4, had to get up at 4.30. And that wake up, that laying down, I was supposed to get my uniform ready. I didn't even fucking deal with it. I was like, man, fuck this. Who cares? I just went to bed and all my shit got up. And that was a, uh, when I woke up that morning, I thought, what have I done? I don't know if I'm gonna be able to even go one more day of this. But I got up, changed out, shaved, started my day. And the rest is history, right? Ended up going multiple deployments. Had a, we had to use that time in the French Foreign Legion very well. And that was a very rare day. Day like that didn't even happen again. I had some other weird shit go on. It's the French Foreign Legion, mind you. So we're going to get into all those stories. Trust me, they're all coming. I love y'all tuning in so we can actually break this shit down. It's fun, man. But also remember, there's lessons to be learned here. I learned, man, I had already passed SEAL training. I knew I could push past stuff. This was different. This was psychological. And that was, there was no ignorance anymore. The ignorance was gone, right? I knew it was going to be difficult. I knew what I was walking into. I knew what I had already done, which made like that starting back at the bottom like we talked about. And I knew the only thing we got to do, especially if you're going through some shit right now and you're waking up in that moment where you're like, fuck, dude, I do not know if I can do this. Guess what? You can. And guess what? You have to. You have a responsibility to. Get up. Get moving. Doesn't matter how bad it hurts or how much your legs feel like you're in fucking quicksand just from the depression. The only cure is movement. Anxiety can't catch action. Start moving. Doesn't have to be correct. Make it good and positive. But it doesn't have to be perfect action, right? Imperfect action beats perfect inaction every time. And twice on Sunday. Be smart out here.